So I, I know that I have inflicted my knee injury on you much too much <laughs> over the past few weeks. If you've been here, you've heard about my, my little knee injury, or if you've watched the videos, you know about the knee injury. If you've read my blog, you know about the knee injury, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Um, you also know that my knee injury is getting much better. I can even move like this. <laughs> so all sorts of things. Thank you to all of you who have shared your healing energy with me. I do appreciate it and uh, are continuing to share that with me. I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. As I shared in my blog this week, I've been working also with a friend of mine who is a personal trainer. And I said, as I said in, the, in my blog, I, uh, I hesitate to call him that because I've known many personal trainers and uh, he is so much more than those people were. Um, he's just much more thoughtful and intentional and about healing and education and facilitation and facilitating healing. And so he's helping me to strengthen the muscles in my legs to support the body, to support the knee, I mean. And it's been a very interesting process. And through the process, what I've recognized is that as we, that, uh, as we strengthen the physical body, that as I've been processing these exercises and going through this process, how analogous that is to growing our spiritual strength as well, to increasing our spiritual strength and the process that I'm experiencing there. And one of the things that I noticed was I really wasn't so motivated to exercise until I experienced an injury. Anybody else ever have that come up? <clears throat> until I really felt like I needed to do something to strengthen my muscles. I really, I was exercising, but I was doing it in a way that I had learned many years ago that probably wasn't really effective. And so I got a new motivation to call my friend and to learn different ways of doing things. And I think sometimes our spiritual journey can be similar to that. Anybody have that idea that we kind of go along in our lives and everything is hunky-dory until something slaps us in the face or knocks us down and then we realize, oh, yeah, maybe I want to have some more spiritual strength. Maybe I want to go into prayer and meditation. Maybe I want to learn some more about that divine energy that is my truth. And so I think that's another thing that comes up for us. The other thing I realize about, about that is that uh, doing these exercises supports my entire body, supports everything about my physical body. And I think the same thing is true in our spiritual journeys, that when we begin to practice, our, have our spiritual practice and grow our awareness of our divine nature, which is our spiritual nature, then as we grow in that, it strengthens everything in our lives. And we build resilience so that when something does come into our lives that is a surprise or shock in some way, an injury or emotional injury or pain, then we have some reserves, we have some strength to face those things. So I think that's also one of the things that is analogous to this journey. The other thing I'm noticing about it <coughs> is that it requires me to be very dedicated and committed to the process. Because sometimes I don't really want to do it. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather just, just go lot, sit in front of the television and watch something or, or go do something else um, than exercise and do these exercises. Even though I know they're beneficial for me, anybody ever got involved in a spiritual practice and recognized the benefit and then decided you didn't have time for it? <laughs> I think that happens for us often. Uh, or maybe it's just me, I don't know. But the other thing I notice is that it's progressive, that it takes time and it takes practice. So it's important for us to engage while we're building, while I'm building the, the physical body, building, building the spiritual uh, um, body is also, uh, takes some time for us to practice and not to, not to think it's going to happen instantaneously. And so in some ways it's, uh, it is that, and so it's talking about uh, some of the aspects and the elements of this process. And what I've come up with is the seven P's of building your spiritual muscle. The seven P's of building your spiritual muscle. And the first one really is purpose. Kind of like building your physical muscle strength. What's your purpose? 
What's the purpose for building up the body? Well, you know, the main purpose is to have a smoking hot bod. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> duh. But, um, <laughs> no, the purpose really of doing that is so that, I, so that we have a strong physical uh, vessel, a vehicle for us to be able to express spirit in a very powerful way. And so I think ultimately that's what the purpose of that is. Even though there may be some fringe benefits, like a smoking hot bod, or more energy, <laughs> or whatever that is, but our purpose is to really strengthen our physical body so that we can be in alignment and be expressing that. I think the same thing is true with our spiritual muscle. I mean, we may, we will enjoy some benefits of growing our spiritual strength, our spiritual muscle. But for me, the ultimate purpose of that is so that we are in alignment with the divine nature that we are, so that we are embodying what we in unity call the Christ consciousness, the divine nature of who we truly are. So we engage in growing our spiritual muscle so that we become the embodiment of, and I'm going to say this, and some people may react to it, so we do become the body of the Christ in expression. The body of the Christ consciousness. And so we build our spiritual muscle, our spiritual body, so that we are living from that consciousness which we believe the Master Teacher Jesus embodied. And he expressed that consciousness through love and compassion, through what we think of as miracles, demonstrations of that embodiment, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, raising the dead, all of the things that we may think are impossible for us. But as Jesus also said to us, greater things than I have done will you do. And I think that's the purpose of building our spiritual strength so that we together embody that Christ consciousness and so that we together begin to create and demonstrate and manifest a world that embodies that consciousness. And so I do believe that we have that that is an innate power within us as we align to it. The other piece of that is practice. That it doesn't just happen automatically. Like with the physical body, building our spiritual strength requires us to engage in a spiritual practice. Prayer and meditation and contemplation and a movement Yoga, Tai Chi, Tai Chi Gung. Well, all of those things, that, all of those activities that also help us to engage with something greater. And so it also builds, as I said earlier, a capacity, a resilience when we practice. When we grow in our spiritual understanding, we are more able and ready to face whatever comes our way. We are more ready to respond from a spiritual grounding when we have strengthened our spiritual understanding and our knowing of who we are. And so I encourage us to develop a daily practice if you don't already have a daily practice. It doesn't have to be a 30 minutes every morning and every evening. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes a day at the beginning. Start where you are, but develop a practice. The third thing is presence. I've noticed when I am doing my exercises that I really have to pay attention to what my body is doing, how I'm moving certain muscles, how I'm wanting to compensate, how I'm wanting to get into a, a position that's easier but doesn't necessarily work the muscles I'm trying to work. I have to be present. What's going on in the moment? Same thing is true for our spiritual growth, to be present. One of, the, one of the 
uh, most effective ways I know of to be present is with the breath. Just breathing, focusing on breath, allowing yourself to breathe in and breathe out. Simply a very, very a simple way of coming into the present moment. To be present with where you are. What's going on in the moment? What am I doing? What am I feeling? What am I experiencing in the moment? So being present is very key to our spiritual growth as well. The other thing I mentioned earlier is patience. How many of us just want to have that quantum leap into enlightenment, right? I just want to be enlightened, for God's sake. Don't, I don't want to go through all this other stuff, right? It can happen. It happens. But for most of us, it's a journey step by step by step. And so being patient with ourselves right where we are also builds empathy and compassion for ourselves, right? And when we can get in that place of empathy and compassion for ourselves, we're, less, we're not judging ourselves. Why am I not further along? Anybody ever get to that point? I wish I was somewhere else or I was somewhere else yesterday. Now I'm back a step. Right? Sometimes it's about taking two steps forward and a step back. It's okay in our spiritual journey, in our spiritual growth, to just be patient with ourselves. The other thing is perseverance. To keep doing it. Keep going. Stay strong in that. And the other thing about that is um, trust and faith. I found, I like the word trust lately. Because um, this idea of trust, is, is, to me, is more of a feeling. I'm feeling trust. I'm trusting, even though I may not see the end results, or I may not be seeing the, the growth or the results I would enjoy seeing, I mean, I don't yet have that smoking hot bod that I'm looking for. So I, but I'm... But, you know, the thing is that I trust that as I'm doing my exercises, practicing my practice, that I am growing. I'm trusting. And that, to me, is paramount in our spiritual journey. It's like climbing a mountain. You, you know, if you start at the bottom of the mountain, you may not be able to see the top, but you probably trust that it's there, don't you? You probably have some sense that it's there. I think the same is true for us in our spiritual growth. It's like we have to trust. We have to trust and have that assurance that each step along the journey we are getting closer and closer to the embodiment of the Christ consciousness that is our goal, that is our truth. Because as I said at the beginning, I believe that is our purpose. And that is the purpose of our spiritual journey, is to grow in the awareness of who we truly are. And again, it's a daily practice, daily practice of prayer and meditation affirmations, denials, all of those tools that we teach and we've learned to grow ourselves in our spiritual understanding. And then lastly, but certainly not least, is this idea of praise, thanksgiving, rejoicing, celebrating, celebrating how far we've come, celebrating each step along the path to stop and give thanks and to celebrate and honor yourself. Honor yourself for your journey. Honor the progress that you have made. Celebrate that for yourself. It's so important. And to celebrate and to give thanks and to be in that place of gratitude is another energy vibration that is so powerful. The gratitude is a powerful energy vibration in your emotions that aligns you to the energy of the divine and begins to even more, attract more into your life to be grateful for. So two things that I want to say about that 
that I think are so important that trust is a vibration of mind and spirit, of heart, so is gratitude. And both of those emotions and states of mind, states of consciousness, are more in alignment, I believe, with the divine nature, the Christ nature that you are, and help you even more to align to that Christ nature. As you feel trust and you feel gratitude, that you come more into alignment with that. And so if you find yourself in a place where it's difficult to find anything to be grateful for, just go out into nature and just look at the sun. I mean, don't look at the sun because it might blind you, but (laughs) enjoy nature. You know, listen to the birds. Walk in the grass barefoot. Whatever it is that you can find to elicit this feeling of gratitude, I think is so important because the more we build that energy, the more it becomes a part of us and the more we begin to embody that energy. And as we begin to more and more embody the energy that we call the Christ consciousness, the more we begin to demonstrate it in our lives not only in our physical bodies, but as I said early, earlier, we embody it. We become the vibration. We become what we want to create in our lives. We don't have to worry out about how it's going to happen out there because it is the vibration of the Christ consciousness that draws unto itself everything that is in resonance with it. And so it's about becoming who we are, becoming what we want, becoming that vibration. And so that's really what I wanted to share with you today about building our spiritual awareness, building our spiritual muscle, that it takes knowing our purpose, practicing, being present, being patient with ourselves, persevering, keep going, even though it may seem challenging or you may seem like you've taken a step back, keep taking one step and the next step and the next step because you will get there. And to keep, keep going day by day by day and to stop and to praise and to celebrate, to give thanks in your life and for your life and for all that is supporting you along this journey. So, Again, building your spiritual muscle day by day, moment by moment, thought by thought, feeling by feeling. I encourage you to know that as you do that, you become more and more the vibration of that which you are choosing to know yourself as and be.